What the hell are we doing? Seriously, what are we doing? What has this stream become? Who are you people? Who are you people? Like I started this stream, I was gonna be like, okay, it's just gonna be games. It's gonna be games that I'm in. It'd be fun to connect with fans by playing games that I'm in live. And I'm like, do you want me to play Mr. Love Queen's Choice, which I'm in? Or do you want me to play an Otome game about an old chicken man? And you guys are like, definitely the old chicken man. 100% the old chicken man. We need, we need that 06 in the military chicken man content that we need it in our lives. The poll wasn't even close. Wasn't even close. You demanded that I play. I I love you, Colonel Sanders. Not even close. Was it, let's see, what did it end up being finally? Oops. 72% of people wanted me to play the KFC romance game. To be clear, we are not finishing Mr. Love Queen's Choice. I just wanted something different for a week. I don't know how this is going to go, but I'm really enjoying Tuesday being Otome Day. Um... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for all the gift subs. You guys are beautiful people. I know this is the last time that anybody will be at the stream because it's going to get real f***ed up. Um, I neglected to do this at the previous Otome stream beginning. So I will say this now. We have a halftime show for every stream. At a halfway point, I break and I play an improv game. You guys get to submit your improv things to me. So in this case, you guys get to describe a situation and I get to give you, I have to look, read the situation and come up with like a one-liner pickup line or something romantic and cheesy Otome style. So if you have a situation, you can whisper a mod or if you're one of the subscribers and you have access to the private Discord server, you can do that on Discord. And they'll collect all that stuff for me. And at halftime, I will go through it. And we've come up with some real weird pickup lines. Like, real weird pickup lines. Um, this halftime is, is, is pretty fun. Yeah, I don't, I hope this isn't going to be as traumatizing as Deer Simulator. Uh was I don't think it can be because that was that was pretty rough but um yeah I if you're this stream will probably I, I don't know how to mark a stream for mature audiences I'm not gonna get into like our territory so don't worry too much about it but it's gonna get weird this is a weird romance game about Colonel F Sanders what are we doing I hold all of you personally responsible for what's about to happen on this stream I hold you all personally responsible I don't know if this is going to be the beginning of a new era or if this is going to be the end of everything. This is either the genesis or the apocalypse of of something. I I don't know what that is. So let's let's just let's just dive in. I couldn't get this is going to be one of my worst transitions ever. I'm just going to stop the music and start this. The for some reason it doesn't come out of the right uh, sound. So, all right, here here we go. Should pop up here in a second. That's amazing. Thanks. Already we're we're doing great.
as an anime fan, I can't decide if this is offensive or exactly what we deserve. Are there any settings that are interesting here? Full screen. Okay. Prioritize quality. Yeah, I think I can prioritize quality. I... Is this voiced? Or is it only text? Am I going to have to narrate this f***ing game? Oh, sh**. Does the colonel speak? Do I have to come up with a colonel voice? Is there a colonel voice? This is going to be exhausting. All right. I... <sighs> is there another name we need? Is there any other name? I mean, if we're going to go, we're going to go far. Cluck Gang is pretty good. Cluck Gang is pretty good. <laughs> Cluck Gang? Okay. Ugh. Holy sh**, the loading screen. You sleep softly as the morning sun. All right, well, we just... So should we make this, like, super warm? Should the narrator voice be super warm? Maybe, like, a little bit of reverb? Thanks. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you could wake up now, now, now! Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in! Throw the clock out the window. You <laughs> ah, game over! We hit it, game over! That's it, everybody. So great. Awesome. That was great. Oh, man. If I give up, does it just does it take me back to the venue? All right, guys, that was great. That was great. I'll see you next time. I wish. I wish it was that easy. Well, we know there's game overs. Game's over? Come over, come overs? I'm not reading this again. That f***ing alarm clock. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy for... University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. There are... There are four descriptors of the word... Who wrote this? There are four words that mean school in this sentence. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by and you find your imagination getting away from you. You allow yourself to daydream a bit, thinking about the future. It's here. Finally. Your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare. So many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities. When you realize you're running late, you grab a biscuit and burst out the door in the... Oh my god. Mmm. Delicious. Just what you needed.
to wake up those taste buds. Yikes! You're in such a hurry, in fact, that you forgot to put on any deodorant before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for learning how many times might I have to say that? Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam! She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. She's cooler than me. Good morning, Cluck Gang! Actually, um, oh, oh, I have words. Because I sure am! Excited, a little nervous, okay, okay, a lot nervous. What's the... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I... Classic, classic Miriam. Raised by master chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're gonna do great, Miriam. Oh, little, okay, so there's little emote noises. But with University of Cooking School Academy for Learning Educational Center, Famous three day three day only semesters. Uh, chip the tooth practicing on a mannequin. Uh, let's pep talk her. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read and she told you that the end was coming. The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares, I've been trying to forget. I know she looked spooky, but she was so sweet. And she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower and the other card featuring the handsome fellow in a red suit? I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time, we'll be gra- well, three days, we'll be graduating. You'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. She looks like she's trying to cut them. Can you believe I cut them myself? Yes. You can definitely believe it. I, I cannot believe it. You're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. What the f all right, enter the antagonist. Wow. It's... <laughs> okay. I want to take a moment and say that already, I f***ing love this game. Look how they spelled Ashley. She's totally evil. She's got fangs. She's got heart boobs. I didn't see their chicken shins. You leave clucking shins alone. They're perfectly normal shins. Ugh. You can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. Should it be Ashley? You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not gonna let you, you we're, we're not gonna let you or your really weird insults get to us. Oh, Van Van the Man Man. His pants are so tight you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they are rocking glutes. <clears throat> Van Van! Wow. You rang, rang. I feel like, yeah, I feel like he's not wearing a shirt. He's not wearing a, sh he's not wearing a shirt. He's just wearing a, he's just wearing a, um, is it a dicky? Is that what that is? Are we going to talk about his, his dicky? I think that's a dicky. Is it a dicky? Is he wearing a dicky? I don't think that's an apron. No, no, that's a dicky. You rang, rang. That's his, that's his, that's his accent. 
I'm still go- No, it's not long enough to be an apron. That's a dicky. You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy of Learning Educational Center would allow ever people like you to blah blah blah. I know, right? You think they just hand us our diplomas now? I think that's gonna be Ashley's voice. Or maybe hire us as professors. You amateurs could learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off. So you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Uh. See you later, losers! As you, oh my god, how many characters in this? As you approach the door, you see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. And he farted? Ooping. I think it's broken! You reach forward and easily pull the door open. He has a ghost coming out of his ears. Uh, well that should do the trick. I love you! I think you mean th thank you. My name's Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop, he's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi, Pop. I'm Cluck Gang, so are you gonna make me hold this door all day? You're gonna walk inside. Nope! And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it me or is he just kinda cute? Just, no, it's, he, this person was made for you, Miriam. You both shrug your shoulders before, follow me here in the building. Okay, who's this guy? And what does this have to do with cooking? This is trigonometry! A scruffy looking pooch takes his place at a podium in the front of the class. Adorable. No, no! Quiet down, everyone! That's too close to whatever's. But I feel like it works for him, doesn't it? Sprinkles? His name is Spr His name is Sprinkles! Who is this unreasonably cute pup and why isn't he our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and a little fluffy, but I still demand respect. Poof! Uh, British. Okay, yeah, we can do English. That's- that's perfect. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever! Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom pillows fills the air inside of the classroom. I'm chilly! Someone close the window! And then... <sighs> he walks in. Oh my god. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him! It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Holland! So I guess we can go with sort of like a... Oh my god, what's her name? Julia Child's voice for Sprinkles. Check your Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog. Before he can finish, finish his sentence. Please. Call me Colonel. Is that an acceptable Colonel Sanders voice, or does he need to have the set? Doesn't need to be a while. Please, call me Colonel. Does he have to have a Southern accent, or can he just be straight up? Thanks. Does he does he have to have the North North Carolina accent? Please, call me Colonel. Straight up hot is fine. No Southern or Southern. Mods, run the poll. We have to figure this out. Southern British? What is even that? Okay. No, it can't be it can't be like Deep South. No, it can't do something like that. No, that's not gonna work. It has to be like, I'm from Kentucky, which is on the border of It's gonna be Foghorn Leghorn. Please call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. 
German? A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Oops, I clicked off. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. And oh, this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. <laughs> wow, nice one. Maybe we should open that window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Looks like we're going with a southern accent for the colonel. Hold on a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We're in the same kindergarten class. What's with your really weird insults? Besides, when Click Gang sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. <laughs> Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you, smiling gently, his hand outstretched. Boy, howdy. This classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer. Please, use my handkerchief. You freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. Oh my God. Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look. You're completely mortified. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? You take the handkerchief. When a Southern man offers you, you take it. You stretch out your hand and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it. So beautiful, you hesitate to profess, press it to your face, but when you do, the feeling is transcendent. It has his natural scent on it because it's been near his butt all day. It smells of chicken? Check your G diffuser system. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and get some ground rules. Welcome to the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends, past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears, there will be blood. There might even be really adorable, tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. Just then, this sounds like a super violent school. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hi, hey guys. Sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. I don't have a personality, so... Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish! I bet you never learn his name. I bet you never learn his name throughout the entire game. Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable! Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels! Who the hell is Clank? Whoa. Whoa. Oh, Clank, you rascal. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose in the air and takes a deep sniff. Mm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. What are these charts over there? You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. What kind? I mean, I feel like this is a game about chicken. If you picked anything other than... It's gotta be chicken. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide. His favorite! Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for a new star student. <laughs> He's on a pedestal with a chicken on it. If 
they want to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. That's that's fucking right. That's right. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. So is Colonel Sanders a, a, a student? Hey, clock gang, there's still a seat here. It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. F Miriam. You moved to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me this seat. I've only had two rules. Do all you can, and do it the best you can. It's the only way you ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. That's so inspiring. A little off topic, if you ask me, but all right. As soon as you settle in your seat, Professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. Hey, hey, a quiz about me. This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you are ready for life at the culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharp, but here comes question number one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely, looking at you, Pop. Forest is to tree, as chicken is to... a slant feather. What's the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A spork. What food is best for a broken heart? Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. Is Sprinkles a good boy? He's the best boy. Your total score is five out of five. Well, be honest, did you cheat? With what? I know we just met, but I have to confess, I think you have a beautiful brain. Hot diggity. He just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! Wow. The Stewart Cafeteria established 2015. It better be fried chicken. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shut up. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with y'all for lunch. Uh -huh. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. Look at those forearms. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this. Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. You know what, F this game because of God damn if I don't want fried chicken right now. It sucks because it's working. It sucks. Shit. I even kind of like the music. God damn it. Colonel Sanders has filled For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes. F*** me if they're about to give away the KFC secret recipe in this game. But that's all I'll say about that. What? You, you think you want your stupid recipe, dude? And I forgot his voice. 
No, my dude, no. Nah. I'm just uh, drafting a little will and testament in case one of those ingredients is poison. Got him. Wow, what a zinger. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language? Oh, that's not her voice. From bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders, she realizes that he is destined for greatness. Oh, please. Hmm. Well, well, Van Van the Man Man. If you don't want any. I'll take his... Whoa, whoa, hold on a minute. I guess I'll, I guess I'll try it. He takes a look at it. He says, wow, that's some serious chicken action. Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. Tasting, oh my God. Tasting Colonel, tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Savor the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. The flavors in your mouth are pure, beautiful, heavenly. What a guy. Alone with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man? For a flavor? Are they the same? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. Is there a save button? Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, can I where's the rest of his body? Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? <gasps> How bold to come out and just ask. Where did the chicken staff come from? I need to know where the chicken staff came from. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. You know, no big deal. It's just you and me talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He looks pissed off here. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? Aw. Oh. Aw. Oh. You've got Moxie, I'll give you that. But get the f away from me. Thanks. Just... <laughs> just one ingredient. But you can't tell. I use dog sh it's something my great-grandmother taught me. <laughs> Dog sh Wow! You'd never have guessed that! While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation of this game, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. I was just out here admiring the soccer blossoms. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. Sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Neg him to show your own strength. Wow him with a big idea. I mean like... I don't know. Can you, you? You can't save, right? Do we want to be a jerk? All right. 
I enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex, but comforting. I appreciate the compliment, Cluck Gang. I'm sorry. Did you say Cluck Gang? Did you say that magical chicken phrase that gets me up in the morning? I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena. Clearly stolen from... Katsukeki. It's magnificent! We have to show our stuff. You're not gonna blow anything. Ah, boy. <laughs> or is she? Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off! Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Cur you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel, you want to tackle this lesson in team or team or two? That's just me and you. Just me and you. Want to be my partner? Oh, sure, Club Gang. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner. Miriam is all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner! I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Choose both! Oh, she's definitely getting clank. Definitely getting clank. Definitely clank. Sorry, Pop, but you're really f***ing annoying. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. And this makes me feel good inside. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Tissue? I hardly know you! Wow. Wow. A panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will just be fine. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea? Check your G system. Oh. Okay, steak tartare. Using octopus or mashed potatoes and gravy. Let's go with mashed potatoes and gravy. I mean, it goes with fried chicken, right? Oh, I think I nailed it. I was thinking we can make something warm, inviting, comforting, like love. <gasps> and gravy. I couldn't imagine one without the other. Kind of like you and me. Beat red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes! I did suggest they make love. Uh -huh. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Jerk. Mind your own business. You have chicken on your tights. Sanders' heart is my business, and you better keep your fingers off my map. Did someone call for me? Uh, no, jeez, Van Van, well, I'm over here crushing clock. All right, we're back. We got metal. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability. Kind of creations worthy of them. Right? Have really chicken out there. But currently, if you ask me, I may be a better partner for you than this thing that is positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we can cast completely copyright with hands and have to have with him? I 
Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders. I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine, not to bicker with prima donnas. I chose Colonel Sanders and Colonel Sanders chose me. Well, a businessman respects all fair agreements from contracts and handshakes. I, we're just, let's get through the metal. I'm, the metal is, is making me edgy here. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Pluck Gang's natural talent or their loyalty. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. Your hands have been cooking on autopilot. What are you making? Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mash texture with plenty of butter. I know just what to do. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato. <laughs> gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it. But he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork. And for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together you dig the utensil. This game is super extra. You know she's plotting against you, and then filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right at Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Take this spork! Van Van, oh my god, I have potato in my face. Scooping up a finger full, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes it is delicious. Hold on right there, clock gang. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Now, if I was clock gang, I might throw a spoonful of mashed potato onto Colonel Sanders. Van Van rushes back over a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes and gravy, pathetic! Where did he get a f***ing axe? I have prepared a full meal, gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky saltwater sauce, plated on a battle axe. I'm legitimately hungry. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have the first bite. You will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes his bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish shouldn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Is this dude gonna die? Too late, it's been eaten. I, uh, I think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It can't. Uh, everyone step back! Don't take another bite! When you look back at the plate... <laughs> Pop ate it! Pop winces in pain, then it's immediately back. Tastes like poop. <laughs> the entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. This is so morbid. This uh, it was nice sub or uh, follow. This class bell uh, has not. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Ghost of student. Um. Hello. 
I just turned into a ghost over here. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Is nobody listening to me? What the f you guys? At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark. Spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. He's crying over potatoes. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Clark Gang. There's something I need to tell you. Uh -huh. Oh, sh. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I'd be the greatest chef the world's ever seen. Check your G diffuser system. Like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ugh. No, no, you're not listening to me. Shut up. Are we forgetting that you're cooking? <laughs> Literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. <laughs> what was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long sad sigh. <laughs> <sighs> Guys, this game is f***ing great. It's great. Forget him. We're talking about me. <sighs> what the f*** is that? What the f*** is happening? How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. <laughs> I... I don't even know what... what... what voice... Be afraid. Be very afraid of me. Because I'm a monster thief. Is he rhyming on purpose or is it just coincidence? Before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? I will attack. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. The attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. You take one damage. Uh, let's defend. I will use trepidation. You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure, you do you. I love this game. Spork fonts monster and draws an energy from Mother Earth itself. I will attack. Cook with love. You tell a tinsel. Attack. Cook with love! Sp Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sum- Oh, Jesus f***ing Christ. An injured sport monster spews steam into the night. I don't know, should we finish him? Alright, I'll spare him. 
You managed to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize he's still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I still forget this, and I certainly won't be back like you said. The spork monster scuttles off into the night, as spork monsters are wont to do. The defeated monster left behind a special item. Orko? The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. You don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. Good night, my colonel. Good night. Wow, thanks, uh, Alan Karafi. I, line, Lil, 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 no, thanks. thanks, L. It's halftime. Thanks. And you know what that means. Thanks. All right, let's see what you guys submitted for halftime today. This is the wrong thing. All right, guys, I'm going to pick them. Carbesic sends this one. The situation. So if this is halftime. You guys get to pick us, make a, a situation up, and I have to make up a... Um, um, a pickup line. This one is from Carbasix. You pick up your order of chicken and mashed potatoes, but they burned it. You need to lift the poor cashier's spirit because it's not their fault. So a cashier who's kind of like down on their luck. Um... Well, you, all right, all right, all right. So you could say, you just, you just, you take the, wow, that's just, I don't know why pickup lines have to echo. Um, so you take the, you take the, 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 the burnt chicken and you put it in the trash and you say, how about instead I have you for dinner? And that can be construed in one of many ways. And you hope they don't take it in the Hannibal Lecter way. Sorry, guys. This is what you signed up for. All right. Time Betray says you are trying to simultaneously flirt and recruit an enemy unit into your heroic cause. This is definitely a strategic move and not at all related to them being super attractive. Uh, how about, uh, hey, why don't you come over here and I can teach you how to really use that spear. We're pushing the edge today, guys. Actually, that all that really made me think of was Rowan's uh, big gay adventure. That really just made me think of Rowan's big gay adventure where they start talking. Was Is it Urias? He's like, I must teach you how to use that spear. You must wield it. All right, Marabou sends this one, and it's just so specific. You're tasked with saving your missing father's one successful theater company from being destroyed by the money-grubbing Yakuza that the manager loaned money from to keep the theater afloat. However, everyone is sick of eating curry on board. What do you say to the hot actor that she also cooked, that also cooks meals for the actors to convince him that you should keep cooking curry every day? And then it says, shout out to anyone who understands my over-specific reference. I have no idea. Several people are saying A3.
I don't I don't know what A3 stands for. So what do I say to the hot actor that cooks meals for everybody else to convince them that you should keep cooking curry every day? I, I mean, like, you know what we have to do if we want to continue to curry favor with the Yakuza. I don't know. All right, so Chibi Envy Chan says, Gavin goes ice skating for the first time when he sees the main character gracefully skating as she trains for an amateur ice skating competition. Seeing Gavin mesmerized by her, uh, they give him a push, sending him flailing in her direction. She somehow stops him before he falls. How does he save face for their first meeting? Okay, so he looks at her and he says, Sorry, I just... When I saw you, I needed to get something close to cool me down. Like the ice, falling on the ice. It's ice. He's hot. She's hot. Look, I didn't say they were going to be good. A boy tries to hit on... This isn't really a pickup line. A boy tries to hit on your girlfriend. You decide to say a one-liner to make him back off. What do you say? You say, listen, kid, a fight with me will have three hits. Me hitting you, you hitting the ground, and the ambulance hitting Route 80. I don't know what you'd say as to, to do that, but... Oh, Emerald Rouge. Uh, that was from Kiki Musical, if I didn't say that already. Um, Emerald Rouge says, You're playing a round of Among Us, but the sus is among the two of you. In response, you say... Uh... I don't, I don't know. How about, uh, uh, hey, how about an emergency meeting? But with like lots of eyebrow raising. Okay, this is like, again, like this is long and super specific. You're at a KFC buffet in Japan after a long flight and train ride. This is from Bonnie Canuck. The restaurant's full, so the staff makes you share a table. The customer across you at the table is gorging on an all-you-can-eat plate full of original recipe fried chicken. At their side is a bowl of special fried chicken soup curry, another plate piled with another dishes like bread quiche, pawns, chicken paella, and yet another crowded with desserts like cates, parfaits, coffee, jelly, and ice cream, and an all-you-can-drink beer to wash it all down. The only one that I can think of is, like, is, is way too dirty for this one. This is a tremendous... Okay. All right. Okay. No, I'm not going to let it out. So in this case, in this case, you take the desserts in specific and you you sweep them off the table and you just lay on the table where the desserts were and you kind of give them like a... No words necessary for that one. Thanks. 
Okay, so Mew, Mew set, submits this one. Uh, this is the last one. I'll take a break. You're visiting your favorite restaurant chain when you find out that it's giving away special promotional gifts that you feel you must have for couples who purchase a special combo meal together. And only a single set of gifts remain. However, you are single. At this moment, a person comes through the entrance of this fast food restaurant chain. And you fall in love at first sight. So, so you walk right, you walk right up to him or her. And you just, you put a finger on their chest and you go, I'll take a number one. All right, let's give away that thing. Let's give it away to people. We got some. We got some stuff to do over here. I didn't actually. I'm having chicken tonight, but it's leftovers from something I cooked on Sunday. Congratulations, Duke Cameron. You're the winner of a print. Get in touch with the mod. Tell him who you are, where you are, what you want on the print, and I will do that for you sometime in the next year and a half. I'm kidding. I usually make a trip like once a month to do all this stuff. Back to this mess. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Ow. 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 Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school, who's probably, I mean, you can't, can't be your bestie anymore, so you rejected her twice. Oh, I know, this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, uh... Yes! Get it, Clank! Get it, Clank! Like, 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 Clank? Something, yes! Great! Miriam and Clank! Ship it! Ship it! We got to talking after class. He's actually a totally sweet guy! Not only that, but he's really smart! He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. I don't know why Miriam started to sound like Mickey Mouse, haha. Huh? Oh, toodles! He was so popular that he was voted prom skink. Come out of school, he didn't tent. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student, you're a thing now. Yo, don't don't hate, don't throw shade, Miriam. Thanks. Aw, thanks, Miriam. No, 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 she wasn't laughing. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me when? Oh no, Cluck Gang. Hmm. Is there a dramatic echo? A lovely man. What story is it? So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wondering. He told me about his passion for spices. Secret spices. Don't, Don't get in that van, Miriam. Oh, no. He gave you cocaine. No. <laughs> No, you're a drug runner! You're a drug runner! Oh, God. Don't tell her. Heck no, we're making up a fake ingredient. It was Eye of Newt.
before you can ask her to confirm. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom, blossom petals fill the air. Squirtle Santa is arriving at school on a horse. Oh, God. Run to him. Run to Colonel Sanders. I hope it doesn't scare his horse. It's gonna scare the horse. Oh, Colonel, my Colonel! It's gonna scare the horse. Oh, no! <laughs> Kicking you directly in the face! In the darkness, do you see a vision? <laughs> oh, I didn't expect any of this. I didn't expect any of this. Ooh, okay. I'm here to deliver you a message. It is important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end. So you know it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm behind. But a great, oh my God. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. That name is... Oh. I'm crying. Oh, Is that his natural season to musk? Compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. <laughs> Maybe you, sh you shouldn't be riding a horse to school. Maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who is in the wrong here. That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. Are you a farrier? Check your G diffuser system. <laughs> you try to get a peek over Van's hulking shoulder. And his dicky, his huge dicky. Look at the size of this guy's dicky. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Uh. Act like you're not interested. You sit near the rivals, but your back turned them. Even your van mutters something that sounds a bit like a magical spell. You try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. <clears throat> it's time for class. You're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset uh -huh. them. Oh, and you're like the Emperor of Cooking, aren't you? You make the rules. Ooh. Ooh. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. Panache. It takes panache. It doesn't hurt to use a little evil. They summon the spork monster. They haven't been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch him in his mouth. We're playing! <laughs> I'm here for that. He rolls right over Vince. Foot! Your bucket of bolts? Hey, watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. I am I am innocent. Innocent. What do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. <laughs> Clank shocks him. <laughs> Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. <laughs> Chicken stuff. 
<laughs> the chicken stab. Expletive. Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Sprinkles is here. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I've spent the morning chasing a car all around town and my legs are very tiny. My tiny legs are very tight. But I'm here now and I hope you're ready to learn. Someday he's gonna catch that car. Rub his furry dog belly, he loves it. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanit. Did you not take a shower yesterday? Down, boy, down. Auf toppen. What the f What? What? Auf toppen. The command snaps sprinkles out of his trance. What the hell? Sorry, I got a little carried away. Without further ado, I will review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson, you really do, but... Which is why in 1776, after the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed in it. What? But he's here. Well, clock gang? Uh... I want to sample a shimmering pe pepper. Your body is not prepared for the heat. The <laughs> These re The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. What? <laughs> this guy. My friend. Oh. I'm here to give you an important message. Oh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <laughs> I was saying, to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... It's fine, I'll, I'll just work through... To fulfill... Your, the prophets... You must... Oh man... Every time... <laughs> that pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever. You sh Time for lunch. The cafeteria lights dim. Ooh. Oh. Today's lunch will be prepared via time competitive cook-off. Step up and tell him you're on. I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I have to set my lunch down at then so be it. Check your I'm system. not the fool, you're the full fool, fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Cluck Gang. I'll be watching your performance. And also, whatever the f is in my hand, I guess. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. This is a lunchroom, not a sports and court. At least not until we turn on the timer! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Aroo! The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope its message lifts you to victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now it's my chance to shine. Get. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one, and you are feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. That's right. But how would you have even gotten into this school without knowing that?
You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did he say you used? Eleven, that's right. You might not know all of the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Now that you've got some basic steps, oh, steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Gratitude. You must never take this opportunity for granted. Eid. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is a raging. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you made it to me and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy. Where did it come from? A small town where big dreams are born. That's right. This is your shot and you will be f if you're gonna miss it. You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Silence. When they taste your cooking, they'll be unable to speak. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, cooking! He's actually cheering you on, which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders on his horse. How many spoonfuls of gravy would it take to drizzle, drizzle, uh, 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 crap? <laughs> You're stranded on a desert island with only one desert cook. Which do you take? What a hunk! Walking along the beach. I don't know. What does it have to- uh, whoop. You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley's already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up the time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. <laughs> oh, we're gonna use clock egg. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. While you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dog before it's overmixed. Thanks. But you're... <laughs> Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Look at him, he's crying. He's got a little tear. He's got a little tear. Everyone, stop what you're doing! This battle is over! Did I really just mutilate my hand in a kitchen mixer? <laughs> Wasted. No, no, it would be fair to compare the two on account of truck gang's injury. Skip straight to dessert! I eat that. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely eat that. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Oh, that's cool. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream, two ways, a tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry gelé. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps unimpressed. Hmm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? I can't eat this shit for lunch. <gasps> uh, I'm not gonna internalize the rage, I'm gonna let it fly, putting myself between Colonel Sanders and Ashley. You reach out with your apron to wipe the sauce off his glistening face. Colonel Sanders recoils and brushes you back. <laughs> I was saving that flavor for later. Oh no, we'll try again. If this brings me back to the very beginning of the game, I'm done. I won't, I won't play this anymore. I will end the stream. I will seriously end this. Okay. Okay, uh, you're on, we're doing it. I'm, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna pick the options again. I'm gonna see if I can get it, all right. Hundred degrees centigrade. Uh, eleven spices. 
Uh, gratitude. A small town with victory support. Silence. I don't remember what the uh, Colonel Spinner said. Look at that one. Okay, so that you're you're gonna you crush your hand. I don't think this was necessary to fail me. Internalize the rage. What is the? What is this? The flames caused your eyebrows to catch fire. You burst into flames. I have a crushed hand and no eyebrows. That's the path to continue? Is I set myself on fire and my eyebrows fall off? And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. He's very concerned. I'm fine, leave me alone. I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. Failure is part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well, think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Go team. Well, handsome sure, I was born that way. I've walked other paths, arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. <laughs> ah! I was passionate about justice, but I, I failed as an obstetrician. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I lost my business partner to a gunfire. And I lost my innocence when I picked up a firearm and put a bullet in my rival. He survived. For all. Oh my god. I'm stretching. People see my delicate ribbon tie, my well-kept beard, and I assume I've got it all together, which is true now. But it hasn't always been. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. One has to remember that every failure can be stepping stone into something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp Check white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past. My <laughs> failed as an obstetrician, Jesus Christ. Yay. It's the spork monster. If I, I know I said I wouldn't be back, but after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but, uh, I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I, uh, I apologize. I know what it's like to have boys look over your shoulder. Master problems, huh? Oh. Thanks, Borko. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I know you're strong. Cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a sport monster, you see. Bullsh. Well, no, I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student. Until one day, some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transferred. Precisely, I had to 
procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you to respect it. You're a powerful chef. This pork monster kind of sounds like Ronald Reagan. Not Ronald Reagan, uh, Richard Nixon. I'm not a crook. If you need me, I'll fear I'll be here. It sounds like there's some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Pluck gang, together, I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can, uh, discuss. A personal invite? Start to feel a special bond with look at that chicken. You live such an exciting life. Damn, look at that view! Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. I, he's got a goatee in the baby picture? Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Especially one with a nice butt. Oh my god, yeah, who's, who's in the urn? A side dish. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy, or something crispy, or both. Oh, reveal it. Original coleslaw. That's what you're gonna pull out? The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light. Oh, though, hang on a second, I'm still in support monster mode. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Luke's hideaway. <gasps> Magnificent. Together you chow down on slaw. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to reverse engineer it and then mass produce it. Sure. Please make yourself comfortable. Is he going to turn out to be the villain? This is the first inkling I've had that there's a chance. There's a chance that Colonel Sanders is going to turn out to be the villain of this. And that when he said he shot his rival, what he really did is murder his business partner. He's definitely going to end up the villain. Now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. First thing I'm doing is, is, oh, scented candle. Power tool? Freshly starched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake? <laughs> it's, oh God. An adorable little baby crawls across the floor. Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? Yeah, that's true. You take a closer look at the large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. Here lies the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. He definitely murdered somebody. Uh, I, I need to know about this chicken. It is real. The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. What's this? Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? The answer to that question is no. No. What's that? A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. It's actually made of spun silver. Oh, damn it! Are you thinking about heading out to the world on a quest to avenge my death? 
Wait, what, I never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window a crack and the ghost of student is swept out with a breeze. Oh, man. <laughs> the photo appears to be Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. Short inscription. My friend Pete. Pete's in the f***ing urn. You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits. You take one off its hanger and try it on. The jacket's a big big, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug. <laughs> oh. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say it does look good on you. It also might look good off of you. Uh, tell him you're cold. It's warm by the fire. Why don't you come a little closer? Suddenly everything... You should be thinking about what you're gonna cook. I should be home studying! You take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Yes, clock guy. I think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. Dream sequence! You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. This was one of the weirdest f***ing experiences of my gaming life. I don't regret it. I don't regret this at all. We're definitely finishing this game next week because we've got we've, we're we're on day three. We're on day three. Right? So, so we'll be able to kind of like finish it. And then, and then, and then we'll go back to Mr. Love that, that day. We'll definitely finish this next week. I'm, I'm almost upset at how much I genuinely like the game. The writing is superb. It's really good. Like, it's really good. Um, I have like a couple minutes if you guys have q and I, I don't know what you could ask me at this point that's relevant or interesting to what we just did together. Hotel Full Boyfriend is definitely on my list. I do like KFC. It's a tradition that I eat it once a year on Halloween. I would totally raise chicken if I had the space for them. I know several people that do raise chickens. The last time I had KFC was Halloween. I'm not getting chicken now. Oh, right, what's up, Doug? That was pretty fucking weird. KFC is better than Popeyes. Uh, Gavin would win in a fight between Gavin and the Colonel. Um. I, I should bring KFC for next week's stream. I don't know what Jollibee is. I'm having leftover chicken shawarma I made on Sunday. I would love to play Doki Doki, but it was kind of spoiled for me as to like the structure of the game and why it's so weird. Um, and also like, it's, it's a little triggering from like a mental illness perspective. It's an exceptional game, 
from what I understand. And I think it's interesting that the way that like they dealt with it, but I don't think I would play it in front of people. You know what I mean? Like it, it just, it's a little triggering for people. Um, Dream Daddy I've heard is good too. <laughs> the other dating sim we play is Fire Emblem on Thursdays. If I got to voice someone in this game, I would love to voice Clank. 100% Clank. Uh, I'm, I'm Team Clank, 100%. Um, a, you know what? I'm great with a, a terribly translated Otome. Kitty Love. Nice, Doug. I, I'll hit on you in real life, buddy. You just gotta, you just gotta say hi. You don't need to, you don't need like a game to interface between me and you. I'll tell you, you're pretty, you're pretty. You're a good looking man, Doug. Um, if I voice Colonel, if, if, if I voice Clank, who would voice Colonel Sanders? I don't know. I would like to see Patrick Seitz voice just that big. Just, I think it would look, it would be a little weird. But we'll figure it out. Yeah, I guess I can't stream something that's time-based. But tomorrow morning, we have Shadowverse happening at 9 a.m. Um, it's been fun going through Urias's stuff. I'm uh, actually, you know what, Bill Rogers, Lucian as Dr. As, as I almost call him Dr. Sanders as uh, Colonel Sanders. Hmm. Mm, I can see that working. I really could. This was a hysterical stream. Thank you guys for showing up and saying hi. Thank you for dealing with my internet crap. There are actually other people playing this game, but I think I think we're gonna go and raid. Let's see. Let's raid somebody doing. Uh, Trails of Cold Steel. I think it's it's important to give that give that game some love. So we're gonna read this person. Let them know Kurt sent you. I will see you guys tomorrow morning. And uh, what do you say at the end of this? Just stay crispy.